Welcome into Cross My Heart Ministry. I'm Laura McFarland, and I have a special treat for you today. As we have every Friday this month, I have a, a girlfriend from Bible study that's coming in to help me unpack the Friday devotionals. Now, if, if you're a regular subscriber, you know that typically on Friday, we lean into our purpose here at Cross My Heart, which is to encourage women to love God and to love his word. And during the school year, we do that by studying through a book of the Bible. We finished Second Corinthians this year. We're going to be starting Nehemiah in the fall. My friend Dawn is here with me. She's one of my small group leaders, and so she's used to that rhythm during the school year. And we record those videos, post them here in the channel on Fridays. But when we're not teaching through a book, I usually share a short teaching video on Friday that's inspired from one of the verses on our monthly Write the Word bookmark. And so typically you hear me sort of do a little monologue. And so this summer, the Lord gave me a different idea. And I had a little coffee time in my home, chose, prayed over the names of a few friends to invite. Donna was one of those. And Donna's heart was, Laura, I want to do this. I'm inspired to do this. I feel like God wants me to do this. But I am not a speaker. In fact, I get very nervous when you put me in front of a camera or a microphone. So the fact that my friend Dawn is here today is the power of God in her life. So I told her this is going to be two friends just talking through a passage. And that's all it's going to be. It's very conversational. We didn't really script this. We're not reading off of a teleprompter. But I, I just know that God is going to encourage you with what Donna has to share today. All of our verses this month come from our Write the Word bookmark for June, which highlights verses that all include the word salvation, a, a very basic truth in our faith, a big kind of churchy word that we throw around. But our salvation just sort of points to our new life in Christ, to our being born again, another little churchy phrase that we use. But it, it basically just points to that time in our life that things became different because we found a new identity in Jesus Christ. And so we look at verses in the Old Testament as well as in the New, and all of them point to the gospel. They point to our need for Christ and how, the sal how our salvation changes us for all of eternity. But also, friends, I hope that as you read and write the word with us this month, it will prompt you to realize that the gospel, as you've heard me say many times, is not just for that day in our future. It's very much for this day. And so, Donna, as we lean in to looking at this bookmark and all these verses that you had to choose from, can you tell us which verse you chose and, and can you read it for us? Sure. Uh, it's 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil or fate. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Okay, that's a lot of words. <laughs> and so you chose a passage actually. So most of the, the items on the bookmark are one verse, but this just didn't have a good stopping point. It, no. it, so it, there's sort of a big cohesive thought here. And so I included verses three, four, and five. When I was looking at this, I thought, wow, that verses four and five, that's one big sentence. I don't know if you noticed, but there are some commas in there, but only one period. I think my high school grammar teacher would have definitely circled that and said, run on sentence. But, but Peter opens in verse three with this one phrase that you read, and it ends in an exclamation point. And he says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, and there's an exclamation point there. So it there's a lot of emotion. And so what what is it that Peter is praising God for? Well, first of all, I think it's just to remember to praise God in everything in our life that happens. Um, and to, to remember our to have an excitement and joy like we had when we first came to know Christ. And so I just, it just brought joy to me. And I kept coming back to it, kept coming back to it. And that that praise is just a beautiful word. You know, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's sort of the excitement that comes initially with a lot of things, getting married or getting a new car or moving to a new place or having a new baby. And, and there's some things. And then when we put our salvation on the top of all of that, um, just just remembering to praise. And of course, just setting up a little bit of context here. This is this book is written at the end of Peter's life. So 
this is an older, wiser, more mature Peter. And so are there any thoughts that you would want to share about why Peter's writing or who he's writing to? Well, he, he, these were new Christians. And so he wanted to just encourage them to continue with their excitement for the Lord. But also as things go along, it's going to get hard, you know, and to remember to praise God and all those things and to remember their salvation. I think it's easy for us to forget that being a Christian in the first century wasn't necessarily a cakewalk. No. And so it, it was hard. They faced a lot of persecution. And, and we forget that there are brothers and sisters of Christ in all sorts of places around the world that do not have the freedom that we have in this country. So he starts off with that word praise, and he's encouraging them to praise God. And then we go on in to verses 4 and 5, and there's some key words here to sort of unpack with exactly what he is praising God for. And so what are some key words there that you wanted to sort of unpack for us? Well, salvation, first of all, um, you know, it's all by God's mercy and his grace that we are saved. And that's one message that he wanted to continue with them, with the first Christians. Uh, living hope was another one, um, that it's, Jesus is living within us and that resurrection and his hope is always, it's going to continue on and on and on. And we have to remember that yeah. um, because how are we going to live through this life without hope? Right. And you know, Donna, as, as, as you and I work, and as you're kind of sharing that and looking, <clears throat> Peter sort of begins with praise and he wraps up the passage with the salvation, with salvation. And yes. so he's praising God for salvation. So it's almost like these are the bookends of the path. Yes. She begins with praise, but he's he's building up to the focus on salvation. Mm -hmm. And so he's showing us some sort of elements of that salvation. And so he's praising God, encouraging us to praise God in Jesus for our salvation, to never let go of that, never let it get that good news to become old news. But then he shows us the different elements of why we praise God for this salvation. And you, you mentioned... And, and sort of elements of our salvation, that it's God's great mercy that, that gave us this new birth and then a living hope. And yes. so, so just that phrase, living hope, um, it, it, it gives us that little adjective that sort of, it's not just hope, it's living hope. Right. And so that must tells us that there's some hope that we can have that's not living. So that might be dead hope or empty hope. And so, well, what kind of thoughts come to mind when you think about living hope well like you said that like if there was a dead hope i mean yeah we look forward to things but it's not going to be forever yeah. you know and that living hope is forever right with our eternity right. through yeah to live with jesus right so. and there's as we look back on our lives you and me we've lived on this planet for more than a pair of minutes yes. <laughs> and and we have friends that are still caught up in things mm -hmm. what are just some things that that people in general try to find their hope in in this world oh, um things um, events, family, friends, and people let you down, or the event will fade, the excitement of the event, or our things will wear out, you know. Yeah. Or... We got to have that next trip. If I can just take another cruise this year, if I could just get a new couch, or I just need that new car smell. Right. If the scale would just say this, if my children would just all come home, if we could just, if, 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 if. And so it's just interesting to think about uh, Jesus Christ being our, our living hope. Absolutely. Uh, that it's not going to wear out or fade. It, 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 it can never go away. And so living in the light of living hope, it kind of prompts me to think, how, how would today be different if I put my feet on the floor and thought about Jesus being my living hope, mm -hmm. my living hope, and, 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 Lord, and, and ask the Lord to convict us? Yes. A, am I placing my hope in something other, other than you? And then what, what's another word you see there, Donna? Well, a beautiful word is inheritance. And I get so excited when I hear that because I know there's something wonderful coming. Um, and he's saving that for us until that, that last day. You know, yeah. it's a beautiful yeah. thing. And it's never going to go away. It's never going to fade. It's never going to spoil or decay like all the things on this earth. Right. So. And uh, just and when we think about the word inheritance, what typically comes to mind? Oh, oh somebody's... Somebody dies and you inherit yes. something, right? So yes, like property or money or you know, things or whatever, that special ring from grandma, you know, right. whatever. Right, right. And most of those things that we might inherit are, are going to wear out or rest out. Uh, they can be stolen. They have to be dusted. Yes. <laughs> they have to be insured. Um, 
but but this is an inheritance that that can't be stolen no. that will never go away that is permanent and lasting and so it's never and and he says here um in, at the end verse four it can it can never what um, i turned it over. oh okay it can never perish spoil or fade yes. because it's kept in heaven yes and so um just a, a a powerful for us to think about and if if you've known christ for a long time that's probably not new information but sometimes i think friends that we don't need to learn something brand new we just need to sort of lean into believing what we already believe yes and i do believe that god gives us um he protects us he shields that inheritance and protects that for us through his power that only he can do mm-hmm. yeah and i love that yeah and so when we think about praising God for our salvation, uh, and it is this inheritance that, that we're going to come to its full realization in heaven, uh, do you think it's easy for women today just to sort of think, well, it's this, it's sort of like this, this inheritance that I have, but it's, it's for later, it's for, it's for then, it's not really for now. I can see how people would think that way um, because it's, it's way in the future, or we think it is. We don't know when our day is that we'll be with the Lord. Right. We don't know. Right. But, you know, it can be a long way off, or it could be when I turn around next. So, yeah. and it's it, exciting to know that's there waiting for me. Right, right. But are there implications of praising God and 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 grabbing a hold of being reminded of that living hope for today? Not Absolutely. just for that day, but Absolutely. for this day. And that peace that he gives you right. through that. Right, and so... On the good days, but all is well, but, but on when we're walking through some rough times, yes. right? Yes, absolutely. You know, life throws all kinds of things, twists and turns and ups and downs. And I, I usually, when I go through something like that, I have to remind myself of these things, but I also just thank God for the situation, you know, what he's done in my life, what he's doing in my life, what he's going to do, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And and I think especially in those challenging circumstances when we're mm-hmm. uh, we're praying for a family member or our husband has a medical diagnosis or maybe there's been a, a financial implication or or a job loss. I mean, fill in the blank. This world is full of difficult things. Mm-hmm. Here in Northwest Arkansas, we've had some yes. some challenging weather situations yes. in the last week where people in our community have lost their homes. Some have lost their lives. We've seen the devastation from a tornado and. Um, so whether it's a, it's a weather issue, whether it's a financial issue, a, a relational issue, a medical issue, right. we know that um, we'll have challenges in this world. Yes. And so when we hear the word praise and we're challenged to praise, it seems easy to praise God for all as well. But, but choosing to praise him yes. when, when there are challenges in our lives Absolutely. You know, praise him in the good times and praise him in the bad times. Right, right. And all the in-between. Exactly, exactly. And when I when I feel like Peter is challenging us to realize, yeah, you've got this inheritance that's waiting in heaven, but you've got this living hope for now. So it's a message that's for then, and it's a message for now. Uh, maybe because I'm a CPA and I think in terms of money and numbers, but I was thinking it's sort of like... Um, when your husband pay, your husband's paycheck comes and all that money is taken out to put in a 401k, well, that's your, that's your investment for the future and you can't touch it now. But there's also some money that you put into the, the fun money category for now. It's, it's, the, it's the do some fun things now. What, what, what's in our date fund? What's in our going out to dinner fund? What is in the gift fund that I get to buy things for the grandchildren? You know, so th- this is something that's way better because it's not going to go away. But it's not, it's not just something that's there that we don't touch, that we leave alone for the future. Our, our salvation is the living hope for today. It's for living hope when days are good and all's right with the world. And it's living hope for the hard days too. And if you're watching this, I know you've got a few of those. Sure. And I hope that if you're a woman of God, that you are praising him for your salvation on the good days as well as the challenging days. And so, Donna, as we wrap up this passage and we look for a takeaway for those that are listening and for you and me, is there a woman of God truth or is there a way that you could wrap up this for us to embrace what God is teaching you through this? Well, the woman woman of God has living hope and praises God for her salvation. Okay, well, that's a those are good words. And so, friends, if you're listening, I hope that you will challenge yourself 
maybe just for the next week, and, and it might become a habit to put your feet on the floor each morning, maybe even literally raise your hands above and say, praise God for my salvation. Praise God that whatever I face today, good, bad, or otherwise, I know that I have a living hope for today, but a living hope for all of eternity that rests completely on the person of Jesus Christ because of my identity in him. I hope you find your identity in Jesus Christ. I hope that you know him as your savior. And I hope that if that's who you are, or even if that's not who you are, you're not sure that maybe all these verses that address and include the word salvation might stir your heart to want that, to want to walk in the light of that living hope, to want to praise him for that living hope, to find him and trust him for salvation. Because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Salvation is found in no one else but in the person of Jesus Christ. I want to thank my friend Donna for spending time with me today and for unpacking some of, of what God is teaching her. And I want to thank you for spending part of your day listening. And I just want to encourage you to print your own copy. There'll be a link in the notes below. And share, share a, a little comment below. Even just the reference or type out the whole verse of which one of these verses on the bookmark seem to be spurring your heart on to praise God for salvation or to live in the light, to live in that living hope of his salvation. For Cross Heart Ministry, I'm Laura, and this is Donna. Have a blessed week. <music>